What is going on, everybody? I hope you're doing incredibly well. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Asian range and why it is so, so powerful. That is what some of these, well, all of these little boxes are with the midlines on. I'm going to be talking about what it is, why it's so important. And at the end of this video, I'm going to explain a few ways that it can be combined with other things to allow you to show you the context that it provides and why it can be so, so powerful. So I know that you're really going to enjoy this one. So I highly recommend sticking around till the end. But first of all, if you're new here, welcome. If you could go ahead and smash that like button for me, it really, really helps me know which videos you like and which videos you don't like. So I'd highly appreciate it if you do that. And if you want to learn more about these concepts and deep dives onto liquidity and other really advanced concepts and also some very simple ones for beginners, also the processes that go into it, advanced backtesting, um, self-review, ATR, all of these types of things, not ATR, what am I talking about? Um, ATA, that's the word I'm looking for, the letters, phrase, um, and all that sort of stuff, then I highly recommend checking out the Psychic FX Academy in the description box below. But without further ado, let's get into it. So what is the Asian range? Well, we have the Asian session, the London session, the New York session. They are the main sessions of the day. We also have the Sydney session and stuff like that and blah, blah, blah. But generally speaking, those are the three major sessions of the day. Now, when it comes to Asia, Asia is the lowest volatility period of the day. So if we were to mark this out, generally this will kind of be the Asia of the day. Then we'll have, this is London and then this is New York. This is kind of the typical day that most people will be working with. This will be London. London will kind of cross over with New York around about here. New York, uh, London will close around here and then New York will close around about down here. Now, there are loads of different variations of this and this isn't the only way of doing it. This isn't the only type of day daily profile that you can get. However, this is just to give you a little bit of a background about exactly what um, Asia is. And so when we have a period of low volatility, OK, so we have volatility that is very, very small and so price is trapped within a small little range. We've got to take a few things into consideration. And the first thing is time. Okay, so we've got time. And we've got, well, let's just first of all, look at time. So time is important, because over this time, we would have been accumulating stops on above price and below price. And so this is going to be a very, very powerful tool for us if we know which direction it's going to go in, because it's all very well and good to be like, OK, I'm going to anticipate a stop punt, a run on liquidity coming down here and then expecting something like this. But how do you know the price isn't going to do something like this? Take out liquidity on the bottom, take it out on the top and then go down. In this case, you've been taken out here, you've been taken out here. And even if you managed to catch this move down, these two losses would have maybe potentially messed up these um, this win here. OK, so in other words, it becomes very important to gauge one thing. And this is what I talk about on the channel so, so much. It's the power of understanding direction and really knowing what is most likely, because then when you come when it comes down to liquidity and concepts like this because that's all this is is it becomes a lot easier and a lot easier just to basically get it right more often because if you know what direction it's going to go a lot of the time then you combine that with understanding where everyone else's stop losses are it kind of things like entries and all this type of stuff they become so much less important okay and so quite simply if we look over here what we're going to do first is we're just going to I'm just going to allow your eyes to go through one by one, look at how price behaves, okay? More specifically, I want to look at the Asian range in relation to where the day finishes, okay? Because remember, each one of these is a daily candle, okay? And so in the same way that you'd have a candle here, candle opens, comes down a bit, and then comes up and closes up here. Let's just have a look at this. So we've got the Asian range down here, but what happens first when the Asian range closes? What happens when we come down at this point in time? What do you think most people are thinking of doing around here? They're seeing a break of structure. Maybe they're seeing something like this. They're saying, OK, cool, it's rejecting. Maybe they're on the 15 minute. They're thinking, fantastic. This is following all my rules. Oh, beautiful. Oh, put my stop loss above this level. Where are we going to go next? Where are we going to go next? Maybe conservatively, we're going down here or maybe 
we're looking at some other level or maybe we're just randomly targeting or targeting this low down here going oh i've got a one to five today this is fantastic great and then what goes and happens is comes down and at some point you're thinking oh my god i've, I've smashed this i've smashed this out of the park and then what happens you get massively taken out not just taken out a little bit but impulsively taken out and that's always a bit more of a sting okay and so we see what happens in relation to this range we see we end up going and making a new high this day ends up being a bullish day let's compare this to over here i'm going to stay on the 15 minute chart so it'll be, it'll be a little bit easier so got the asian range here we come up so first we go down this is the example i gave you earlier we come down then we go up and then we have the move down. And then we have a massively bearish day down here. That's a very, very important piece of information for us and understanding where the direction is. How do you know that price is gonna eventually go down here? And I'll give you a little bit of an insight into that um, towards the end of this video. But let's look at some more examples first. We've got the Asian range here. What happens? We break to the downside and then we continue going up. What happens here? We have the Asian range, we break to the upside and we continue going down. Guys, this is one of the most powerful concepts that you can learn about, believe me, okay? This is why I have it marked out on my chart. I've only recently added the indicator, but it's something that I always mark out when I am, um, you know, before I even had the indicator, I'll always be aware of the Asian range just because I knew that that was where a lot of levels were forming. And you don't necessarily need it. By the way, this indicator is right here. If you go to Asia, just type in Asia. It's literally this first one right here. I'll favorite that by Marek Madjo. So probably butchering that name, but oh well. So right here, what happens here? We break out to the upside. At this point, what's everyone thinking? All the retail buyers, they're going, oh my God, fantastic. Maybe they're drawing out their Fibonacci like this. And they're looking to get involved here. Get involved, nice little 70 retracement right here, looking to get a little extension point. They're feeling pretty good about it. It goes up for a little bit. At this point in time, what do you think most people are thinking? They're probably thinking, oh, this is my winning trade for the day. Fantastic. At the, what? We've all been here, guys. It's a, it's a learning curve, to say the least. Okay, so at this point, you're like, okay, cool. We got stopped out. Obviously, this must have been, this must have been the manipulation move, right? Okay, cool. Well, I guess now we've had that break of structure right here. Nice little bit of aggressive structure here. You could have also said that we had structure breaking here. So maybe we start getting in for a, a sell. So let's look at this as a sell, for example. We get in at the same point. We have our stop at the 100, probably panicking around now. Uh, what, the, what happened? This is so, so common. Okay, this is not a uncommon problem whatsoever. Okay, let's just look at one more example here and see what we can do. So right here, we've got a similar example. We see the price takes, which one came first? So it takes out liquidity here, takes out liquidity here, and then continues going down. And so instead of trying to figure out, oh, you know, is it going to take out both? Is it going to take out little? The most important element is understanding the direction. OK, because if you can understand the direction here, would you have been put off by this liquidity grab here and then it coming higher? Or would you have just been like, right, okay, cool. All I want to see is this liquidity taken to the upside before going down. And guys, if you don't understand liquidity, let me just simplify it here, or at least give you a very, very basic version. I've got lots of other more detailed videos on this. Okay. If you've got lots of stop loss orders above very obvious levels in price like this, that's supposed to be me coloring in. Let's imagine that is different, lots of different stop loss orders around here. And we know the price is predisposed to go down. In order for institutional and smart money to accumulate positions, if they're accumulating buys, they need to, there need to be enough sellers in the market for them to buy off of those sellers in the same way as if you went to a supermarket and somebody is selling something, they need to be selling that in order for you to buy it. You can't buy something that nobody's selling and vice versa. If someone's looking to sell something, there needs to be enough buyers in the market. And so if everybody, everyone and their granny is selling around here, they need price to come higher so that there are enough buyers in the market in order to accumulate their sell positions. Meanwhile, everybody's going to be thinking this is going up and accumulating even more buys, which allows the smart money to sell even more, which allows us to go all the way down here. Now, in the examples that I've shown you here, it can sometimes happen like this. They grab liquidity on both sides and then go all the way down. But 
If you already know the, the direction, then you're only going to be paying attention to this right here, specifically this one, because this right here, you are looking for where they're accumulating their cell positions in this particular example before the major move down. And so it's more important that you're they're taking out the liquidity on the upside rather than the downside. OK, so I hope that makes sense. So how do you gauge direction is the natural next question here. OK, well, there are loads of different ways to gauge direction. And when I say loads, there are loads. And when we're talking about the direction of a day, we've got to be looking at either the daily candles, in my opinion, or the four hour candles, sometimes even the weekly candles. And there are a few different ways to gauge direction. You've got uh, momentum got levels. These for me are the two categories that I would class most things that I would consider decent. The momentum way is going to be things like a moving average. You literally just follow the average like so, like this, and then see what's going on. This is snapped to the um, four hour, so it's a little bit um, funky. So if we snap it to the daily like this, when we go down to the one hour, it will still be showing us the daily moving average. But we can see here that there are a few negatives of doing this. Okay, so right here, we ended up having a down day, down day right here. And this would have told us that it was a buy scenario and a buy day. And so we would have been waiting for the liquidity to have been grabbed here. Now, if you're not looking for a huge amount of pips, we can see that when we did come down to this level, we went up about 34 pips. For me personally, this is completely fine. But a lot of people, when they get involved, is they're constantly looking for new major highs and new major lows to get out. When what I always do is prefer going block to block. It suits my personal style a hell of a lot better. Also predicting where manipulation is going to happen. This is why I've drawn this line right here. And that's something I'll explain in another video. If you want to see a video about that, then I highly recommend um, not highly recommend, then just drop a comment below and uh, I'll do that. Or if you want to want it sooner, then um, feel free to check out the Psychofax Academy. So this is the problem with momentum is it will give delayed signals. The same thing here. We've been by a buy day technically here, 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 here. We've seen, we did see the liquidity taken here, but at this point, most of the daily move has already happened. And this will happen, by the way, if you were looking at this, wondering what's going on. Sometimes it won't manipulate, but the vast majority of the days it will before the overall close. And so if we continue going, what do I then think is the best method? Well, levels for me are going to be my bread and butter. So let's just get rid of the moving average. And so the easiest way to do this is not what's the best level. Let me find the best level and, and search and use 20 different levels. No, no, no. It's pick one and test it. Not forward test it. Don't risk any money. Back test it. You back test one level. Use one level to keep things simple. One level that could be a retest level or supply and demand level, whatever it is. And you use that on a higher time frame. If price is not at a level yet, but it has just bounced off another level, where is it most likely to go? To the next level. And so the question becomes not, oh, what's the best type of level? It's how well can I identify and draw my levels to work and coincide with the rules that I'm putting out there? Okay, now that's a bit of a mouthful. What do I mean by that? Well, you need to make sure that whichever one you pick, you test it in relation to the Asian range. Because there are other so many different methods of trading. And people ask me all the time, oh, is this specific level good? And how does, you know, is this good? Is this bad? It's not about being good and bad. You could have a, uh, let's just think of an example, a, a retest level, for example, very basic, simple retest level. And people say, oh, a retest okay to trade off of. Well, you haven't given me any other information. Trading isn't just about levels. It's about direction, levels, entry. And you could have the same level across 20 strategies where the direction is different in each of those strategies. And there's only one of those strategies where that particular type of level works. It's not about one specific thing. You're not isolating the problem. You know, in medicine and stuff like that, when you go to the doctors, generally in Western medicine, they will isolate the problem. They'll be like, oh, you're, you're having pains in your chest. Okay, cool. Well, let's get an x-ray done and blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying that's bad whatsoever. But in Eastern traditions, for example, they take a much more 
functional approach and functional medicine where they look at the entire body you know maybe you've got chronic inflammation going on that's causing back pain but it's also causing some you know shortness of breath or something like this and kind of symptoms that would seem unrelated and what essentially i found is very valuable in trading is not looking at things in isolation it's looking at the cohesive unit it's looking at it as a giant organism almost and so what does this look like well something like this for example and then looking at where the high probability range is. Also marking out the next level down. To be honest with you, I'd probably mark out the liquidity areas right here. But again, that's not relevant to this day. I'm mainly looking at this day right here. So let's just look at this. Here. So this was my high probability range. If I come into this day, so we just had the Asian range wake up around here, for example, and we've seen right here, and I know that we're going for a bullish day, or I think we are going for a bullish day for this, then what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for liquidity to be grabbed on the lower side before going up. Now, this is a very interesting example, because if we look at this, we will see that price during that initial push before, so you could say this is the manipulation, and I think it is, Right here, you could say that it's already happened. It's already touched this level. And therefore, if price does grab liquidity down here, I'm not expecting it to go back up here anymore. But I am expecting something because there are likely to be more buyers here. And so in this case, I will go block to block. And this might seem a little bit confusing to you. And you're like, oh, I don't quite get this or exactly what's going on. And it's kind of there's a lot of different moving components to this. So I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can and, and short and actionable as possible. So anyway, let's continue moving on. Let's go back to the four hour chart here and go to the next day. So the Asian range has just formed here. At this day, the level that we would be looking at would be right here because what level are we at? We're right here. We're also grabbing liquidity above this previous day, days high right here. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. So if I just draw this out. So this was the level that we'd be looking at. So we're currently at a level that's acting as resistance but more importantly right here so we've grabbed the liquidity above this previous day now this isn't anything to do with the asian range this is just the liquidity touches that i talk about a lot on the channel okay and so if we know that we're going bearish we know the two areas that we want price to manipulate above then when we're on that lower time frame then it becomes a lot easier to see exactly what's going on and why one thing i've forgotten to do is mark out the high probability range where's price really likely to go Right here, again, this is a block-to-block -block example. There is nothing, technically speaking, wrong going down here or even to some of these lower levels. So why am I not doing that? Well, it doesn't matter which one you do. The only difference is going to be your success rate because the more you go for, the less likely it's going to hit. That's just the you know basic probabilities and, and maths. So I am just doing block-to-block -block in this example, but if there was a longer-term held trade, Nothing stopping you going down here. Does that mean it's going to hit every time? No, of course not. But nevertheless. And so here we wait for kind of, we wait for, not kind of, wait for evidence of price to shift around. We see it's grab liquidity up here. We start seeing some sell structure forming. This would be what I'd be comfortable with. And then right here would be my area that I'm looking to get involved. Let's see what time of day this is. Yep, thought so just around the time that I love to trade. I love the beginning of New York session. It's my favorite time to get involved. And this is a very, very powerful tool in and of itself. Okay. Also notice over here, this setup, what time did it develop? This setup from yesterday where it just about grabbed liquidity and came up block to block. What time did it form? Again, between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. at London time, UK time. Okay. So guys, I really, really hope that this has given you a little bit of an insight. And if you want to learn more about the concepts and combining different stuff, then I highly recommend checking out the Psychotax Academy. But if not, if that's not what you're feeling like right now, maybe it's just not right for you, or maybe you just don't have the money, that's completely fine. There should be a video popping up on the screen or playlist for institutional trade secrets. It's a great uh, series. It's a great um, playlist that I've got on my channel. It's going to walk through a lot of different concepts that work really, really well in combination with this. And as always, make sure that you go ahead and you backtest this at least 100 times without risk. You track it, you review the results and then see if you like it or not. If you don't like it, you know, 
then make your own decision from there. But you've got to make sure that you test these things. Never take my word for it or anyone else's word for it. And uh, yeah, if you want to watch some of my other students and all that type of stuff, then I highly recommend watching some of the student interviews. That's another playlist I've got on the channel. If you want to learn more about their experiences, sometimes it can be really helpful learning and hearing other people's journeys and stuff like that. Remember, I used to um, listen to other podcasts from other traders when I was learning. I really used to find that arguably way more valuable than the strategies themselves. So I highly recommend checking that out as well. But uh, anyway, it feels like I've been plugging a lot of stuff in this video. I do apologize about that. But in the context of this video, like I said, it's very difficult to explain everything in one video. And I want to make sure you guys have all the things that you need. But anyway, I'm going to stop talking now. I'm sure that I've said blah, 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 et cetera. And all of the things that I normally say and okay a million times this video. So I apologize about that. But I know that there are a few of you who probably like it in some sort of weird way. So uh, <laughs> I uh, hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And I very much look forward to seeing you on the next video.